Pneumonia is an inflammatory lung condition primarily caused by infectious agents, such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, or less commonly, parasites. It can also result from non-infectious causes like aspiration of gastric contents, chemicals, or irritants. The pathophysiology of pneumonia involves a complex series of events that ultimately leads to inflammation and consolidation of lung tissue. Here's a breakdown of the key pathophysiological processes. Entry of pathogens. Pneumonia typically begins when infectious agents enter the respiratory tract. This can happen through inhalation of contaminated air or aspiration of infectious material from the upper airways or stomach. The most common pathogens responsible for pneumonia include Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, Staphylococcus aureus, and various viruses. Infection and colonization. Once the pathogens reach the alveoli, tiny air sacs in the lungs, they can multiply and trigger an immune response. The immune system's first line of defense includes alveolar macrophages, which phagocyte, engulf and digest the invading pathogens. However, in some cases, pathogens can evade this initial defense. Inflammatory response. As the pathogens proliferate, the body's immune response intensifies. This leads to the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines, signaling molecules that recruit white blood cells, such as neutrophils and monocytes, to the site of infection. Alveolar injury and edema The immune response can cause damage to the alveolar lining, leading to increased permeability of blood vessels in the lungs. This increased permeability allows fluid, proteins, and white blood cells to leak into the alveoli, resulting in pulmonary edema. As a consequence, gas exchange in the affected area becomes impaired. Consolidation The accumulation of inflammatory exudate and immune cells in the alveoli results in consolidation, where the normally air-filled spaces of the lung become filled with fluid, pus, and cellular debris. This process leads to decreased lung compliance and impaired oxygenation. Impaired gas exchange, the consolidated lung tissue cannot participate effectively in oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. This leads to hypoxemia, low oxygen levels in the blood, and can result in symptoms such as shortness of breath, cyanosis, bluish discoloration of the skin, and increased respiratory rate. Systemic effects in severe cases or when pathogens enter the bloodstream, systemic effects can occur. These may include fever, increased heart rate, and the release of inflammatory mediators that can affect other organs in the body. Resolution or complications, depending on the individual's immune response and the effectiveness of treatment, pneumonia can either resolve with appropriate therapy or progress to complications like lung abscesses, pleural effusion, accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity, or sepsis. Treatment typically involves antibiotics for bacterial pneumonia, antiviral medications for viral pneumonia, and supportive care to manage symptoms and maintain oxygenation. Early diagnosis and treatment are crucial to prevent severe complications and promote recovery. Additionally, vaccination can help 